drop seven 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 this. Um, yes. <laughs> tell me about it. What have you been working on lately? What keeps you busy? Yeah. Well, first of all, thank you for having me on your platform. I truly appreciate it. Um, and I feel like the title itself is, is definitely like a tongue twister. <laughs> yes, yes, I had to. You like, it. wait, did I say that? At the, the <laughs> <last time? laughs> um, I would say what I've been working on is my upcoming EP, which is called The Clip Off. Um, anyone that study, I would say, the tree of life, Kabbalah, spirituality, et cetera, they'll know what I'm talking about. Um, and for people to have it, new introduction, you know, it's always good to learn something new. Um, I would say it's basically me going back to, um, I would say, a much more hungrier state in regards to creativity, just like really tapping into my create, creative elements and allowing myself to just be all the colors in the, you know, the cram box, <laughs> you know? So with this new single, um, you get to see that. You get to, you know, you get a lot of my, my raunchiness, you get a lot of my dominant energy and, you know, clever wordplay and all those good things. I think it's funny that you bring up unique. Um, let's talk about the artwork for a second. The artwork is very unique. It kind of looks like this <laughs> desert landscape with a disco ball. Uh, right. Where did that come from? What inspired you? You want to know, okay, so it's like, I have sometimes a heavy obsession with like aliens and stuff or like, I'm a sci-fi type of guy. You know, I like horror. I love sci-fi. I love outside the box. So alternative artists and stuff like that are always my go-to, uh, like David Bowie and, you know, so on and so forth. So it's like, you know, when you actually get to create, you're like, oh yeah, yeah I get to take those things in here and throw it out here. <laughs> so I just happened to be on the way home from recording this the, the single and it just popped in my head. I seen a desert, a pink desert, and then I seen a disco ball. I'm like, and a disco ball just represents the sun or the moon that will be out there, you know? Yeah. Um, and it just a way of just a different correlation of, okay, why is it a disco ball in a desert? <laughs> yeah. Um, but it's just me again, tapping into that other ether of creativity and allowing it to just like shine through this era. I also have to say you are a very unique person and you have a very unique demeanor from what I see on social media and through your music and everything. Um, what inspires that creativity in you? Like, how did you come into your own? And it feels like you have it figured out of what your creativity is and who you are as a person. How did you find that? Or are you still finding it? Um, I think it kind of found me because when I originally started back in like 2014, 2015, I was going by T Taylor. Um, and then before my debut EP or LP, I should say, came out, uh, Boy Just Wanna Have Fun, um, I had a spiritual dream, literally a spiritual dream. Oh. And it basically told me to change my name to Seven. Wow. You know, so I did it. As soon as I did it, it's like the doors for like opportunities was like open sesame. That's wild. <laughs> yeah, you know, and it's like a universal number. So it's like you see seven everywhere. You you see people doing things in time cycles all the time. So it's like I I feel like it chose me versus me choosing it. <laughs> wow. And I just tapped into it, and I, I just naturally always been a very creative person since birth. I always just seen all the colors in the rainbow box. Like, let's, let's do this. You know, let's let's pretend to do this. And, you know, that was me as a kid versus other kids. That's like, all right, <laughs> enough with the imagination. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Um, yeah. Your single dropped yesterday, and I know you're probably yeah. on a high from that. And we've had a chance yeah. to listen to it now. Um, what do you hope for when people listen to it? And what do you want them to get out of it? Um, I, I feel like this particular song, single, will definitely reach a lot of the masses of people um, because I'm having, even waking up today uh, with the midnight release and stuff like that, um, I'm waking up to all these different people hitting me up, tagging me, you know, giving me their rebuttal, telling me how much they love the song and et cetera. I think also it's surprising people in a sense of being a rapper and in, in all the different flows I do throughout the song, and, you know, and even the, the catchy hook. Um, I, I feel that this will do amazing. I feel it's going to open some doors to me. I have a strong gut feeling. I love that. I, 
I think it's funny. Let's talk about being a rapper for a second and let's get a little controversial. But when you think of rapper or hip hop or just the rap industry in general, like you are not the typical person that we would peg for that. Um, but right. for me personally, what is so alluring about hip hop and rap is that it is kind of out of the box. It kind of, I mean, it makes you feel kind of rebellious. It's very braggadocious. And when you rap, that is you. Um, yeah. <laughs> in your songs, you're talking about how bad bitches want you, but their men want you too. I mean, yeah, where, does that <laughs> where does that confidence, where do you find that? Um, I think because I view sexuality as, a, again, like as a cram box. It's like, you know, you have days that, ooh, the girls are cute. Then you have days that, ooh, the, the guys are cute too. So it's like, and that's how I've always been, even as a kid, I swear. Even as a kid, I used to have a lot of out of body experiences because I was like, hmm, I don't know. These these people are interested. Like these things are interesting. Why do I why do I have to pick one lane and stay that whole lane my whole life? You know, why can I just like, you know, put everybody together? Um, <laughs> that's just me in my mind. Yeah. Um, but I feel like my confidence in regards to just being very um unapologetic with my dialogue with music is just never wanting to feel silence with myself. Like I feel like because hip hop and the rap culture can be so homophobic <laughs> that now that doors are opening up for artists like myself and Little Nas and Saucy Santana and all those other individuals. Yes. We now have space to really like, you know, talk our shit and 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 get away with it. Yes. <laughs> it's like listening to a song, you're like, ooh, wait a minute. I heard that pronoun, you know, but you know, it's such a bop, you just gonna go along with it. And I think that's that's the beauty of life when you just listen to the music and go along with it instead of criticizing every last aspect of it, you know, like sometimes just enjoy things for what it is. Everything does not need like a full explanation of what is given or what it will give. Enjoy the experience, you know? I feel like I'm an experience. I don't really consider myself human. <laughs> I love that. I love yeah. it so much. Um, I think that's interesting that you bring that up because I feel like the hip hop industry is very rigid still. Um, and you make a good point that it, it's, it's changing. It's, we can see it. We can see the wheels turning. Um, what do you hope for in the future, in the near future, in the far future for hip hop as a whole and rappers as a whole? Um, I do hope for, well, I feel like with my music, I'll say this, with my music and many other peers in this music industry, I feel like with us being consistent with what we do, we'll open a lane that other hip hop artists or rap artists or whatever you choose to do, don't have to go through that whole mental, okay, when do I tell them my sexuality? When do I tell them what I really like? When do I start making the music that I really wanna make? You know, because that's a whole, in this industry, you're selling yourself. You know, no matter what you're doing, you're, you're literally selling yourself and you're in hopes that the masses like you. And that's a psychological challenge because it's like, you can't make everyone like you. Yeah. Nor can you make everyone take you serious, you know, um, or, or even want to take you serious. So it's like, psychologically, we won't want to open up lanes that actually uh, be a magnitude of space where, you know, we don't got to fit in that box, we don't got to fit in that box. We just over here, we chilling over here. Yes. Like we, we're on planet Venus or something, you know, we just, we with the pink girls today, you know, we don't really want to, you know, entwine with that. But if we do, I have no problem going bar to bar with, you know, a heterosexual rapper. I, you know, my pen works. <laughs> so it's like, I have no problem. I have, I, and I've collabed with a lot of, you know, straight artists and so on and so forth. So it's like, it, you know, it doesn't matter to me. I'm, I love music. That's so refreshing to hear. It's kind of a breath of fresh air. Um, <laughs> you are very open about talking about sexuality, but also mental health, trauma, your spirituality. Uh, why is that so important to you? Um, because I know that there's a lot of different sevens, per se, mm -hmm. out here that's trying to look for um, their space in this world. So it's like, I mean, talking about things, I'm sorry, because when I talk about things, I actually relive things. So it's like, you know, but basically there's a lot of sevens out here that are trying to find their way, even though they're not literally seven, but you know, as far as the experience itself 
And it's like, I know how it feels to just want to quit. I know how it feels to just want to like, just back away and F this and da da da. But I also know how it feels when you wake up or you, 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 you run into someone and they're like, hey, I know you. I listen to your music. I love it. You know, keep doing it, you know? And I have a lot of those in-person interactions. When I go places, people know me and I'm like, oh, hey. <laughs> you know, I said, oh, I got used to that now. You know, but, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's so important that um, we have a place of identification for self because there's so many people that are just trying to really literally make it to the next day. They don't even want to be an artist. Or they don't want to be anything. They just want something that gives them that courage, that hope to get to the next day of their life. You know, so I speak to those individuals because I know how it feels to just be in a very uh, compromising mindset, you know? That's that's so awesome to hear. Um, that's crazy. Thank you. I think you touched on it a little bit, but I, what do you think is the biggest challenge, but also the most rewarding thing, being an emerging artist, but being also this very out of the box artist trying to do something different? What do you think is struggle with that, but also a really great thing about it? Um, I think when you're an emerging artist and you're doing something that's opposite of what has been normalized, you have a ton of challenges, you know, <laughs> like it's like RuPaul, someone I look up to, uh, and I read his book and it was amazing. Um, but he literally created a career out of something that was not a legit career. Yeah. And and that's how I knew the power of imagination and belief itself. Like that, if, if he could do it, I could do it too. Yeah. You know? And so it's like when you are being an emerging artist and you're and you're putting your things out there and you're like, okay, I'm waiting for the response. Yeah. And then you start getting all the responses and shares and stuff like that. It's like now you have the responsibility to continue, you know, to continue yeah. what you're doing, continue what you're creating, and just know that it's not an easy trail path. Um, but if you're doing it with purpose, it's worth it. And I feel like my purpose here, um, amongst many things, is to change the music industry. Wow. That's, that's huge. Um, I guess... <laughs> What all do you want to change? I mean, I know we could probably go on about this forever, but I guess maybe like your top three or what's the biggest thing you want to change in the music industry? Oh, um, well, that's a good, well, you asked some really good questions. Um, <laughs> I would say the first thing I would like to change double consciousness. When, I, when do I have to come out? When do I have to say that I like this? When, you know, like, let's stop that narrative. Let them do that. Yeah. You know, it's about the music. It's not about you most likely never in your life will probably have an opportunity to be in your bed. <laughs> you know, so let's just stop that right there. Uh, I feel like the second thing is allowing your what you do prefer to be not be the discredit towards your talents. Yeah. You know, because a lot of people will say, oh, seven, he can rap, he can flow, he can do this, that. But you know, he's gay, he's this. You know, and it's like it don't it don't take nothing from what I'm doing. You know, and a lot of y'all composers in this industry are gay too, but they just gay behind the scenes, <laughs> you know, but you love it, don't you? You know, so it's like, you can't, you, I, I can't nitpick on, I like you because you're, 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 you're straight. And I like you because you're, whatever the situation is, um, I would change that. And I think my third thing would be, is you just more better spaces. Uh, just for for black emerging queer artists, Latino, et cetera, just to come through and have that portal, like where you'd be like, okay, I could submit my things or I could have conversation or I can bring myself up in conversation and, and feel as though I'm being heard and seen. And I'm not just being like, okay, girl. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I would want to change that, you know, that way that people can, once they do have something they want to share with the world, they can share it and share it in the most intimate way, you know? That's awesome. That's so inspiring. I mean, I can only hope that as well. Like I said, I feel like the industry as a whole, but specifically hip hop rap is so rich right. and we can only hope yeah. that it is, you know, opening up and being more accepting um, and more inclusive as it can be. Yes. And I hope for that. Yeah. So, and it's changing. It's, it's changing yeah. dramatically just by, you know, little nods and all those, individuals being on stage and 
you know, having their little kiss and little, their little Madonna moments, I call it. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's, it's changing day by day. And I do feel that sometimes, again, when you are the change or you are the purpose of the change, you have to go through the, the scrutiny. You yeah. got to go through people not really getting you. You got to go through people, you know, shading your music. You got to go through people shading your your, your uh, image or whatever the situation is. And I went through a lot of that. Um, I now got to a place where um, I don't care about the background chatter. I'm focused on the gold. <laughs> it is background singers in my life. So, you know, do your oohs and ahs. <laughs> I love that. Uh, no. I just have mentioned a few names um, throughout this interview, but mm -hmm. who would you say inspires you the most or one of your favorite artists that you listen to that inspires your personal music? Um, I, I got a good top. <laughs> I got Nicki Minaj, Little Kim, Foxy Brown, Jay-Z, Biggie. Oh, wow. did I say Missy Elliott? No, but it <laughs> is, yeah. if they were all together and made a love channel, I would be it. <laughs> that is you awesome. Know. I love that you just knew that too. You could just, yes. Yeah. I love that. They inspire me so much. I, I feel like each part of their careers and the things that they do gave me that push. Like, no, do it, do it, do it. You know, don't play around with it, really do it. Um, so I, I greatly appreciate their uh, contributions to the culture. That's amazing. I have one more question for you and we'll kind of wrap okay. it up, but what are your goals for the future and what can we expect from you? What's on the horizon? My goals is to definitely, um, of course, um, the end all is mainstream success, um, but my version of mainstream success, you know, every one version is different. Um, but just being able to feed myself, feed my family, um, and, and have a openness of opportunity to record and, you know, continue my catalog. Um, my goals this year, um, besides creating more avenues of income, uh, yeah. <laughs> I would say my goals this year is to create uh, extraordinary moments with extraordinary people. Um, and the new EP, you know, the clip off uh, for that to just be a classic which I feel like it is going to be because of where I'm at, you know, creatively. Um, and also just allowing myself to have the reset that I'm having and don't take anything personal. Like just go through your experience, but learn not to take things personal because there's a purpose on why you're experiencing it, you know, experiencing that experience. Um, so I'm just learning to just allow the universe to bless me you know, and link me with people like yourself and, you know, allow us to share these moments. So I'm just learning to just enjoy, enjoy life. You know, that's my, my, my big thing. <laughs> I love that. Thank you so much for meeting with me. This was so fun, but also so deep. Um, I feel like yeah. <laughs> things, but I love that some of the best interviews dive into those deep issues. Uh, I right. cannot wait to see what else you put out there. Still listening Thank to your you. single uh, and congratulations on the release. Thank you so much. And thank you for this, you know, like a, again, sharing this space with me and giving me the opportunity to vocalize my music narrative. Yeah. Of course.